Hello and welcome to St. Mary's Now, a partnership between the Enterprise Newspaper and the Forest Center TV Video Production Program. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm James King. And here's the latest news from the Enterprise. The St. Mary's School Board and Superintendent have been recently discussing the loopholes regarding the St. Mary's County Open Meetings Act. This act states that public officials must conduct the entire process of public business in an open manner. However, most executive sessions, which are closed to the public, allow public boards to discuss topics such as collective bargaining, disciplining students, exams, bidding processes, public safety, property purchases, and personal matters. When questioned about the Open Meetings Act, Superintendent Scott Smith, Scott Smith responded that the board needs time and space to answer questions. A $93,000 grant has been drawn from its emergency reserves to help gain stronger internet services in rural areas. This grant is said to expand Atlantic Broadband service to prioritize county areas in the quote, middle mile. The St. Mary's County Commissioners, along with the U.S. Department of Housing and Com Community Development and Atlantic Broadband are spending $453,000 to extend its connection to Route 5 in Loveville, Curley's Road and Rids, and Wine Road. St. Mary's Riken High School starts its school year off with a new president, a new principal, and a new athletic facility that sits on the 87-acre campus in Leonardtown. The basketball court seats nearly 1,400 in the bleachers and between 800 and 900 on the floor. Betsy Haley, the school's director of communication and marketing, said, There was so much more room. It was amazing. The center, which broke ground in 2017, is not just for athletics on the school's sports teams. It also holds classes like physical education, yoga, and CPR and it will be the new location for the Catholic school's graduations, assemblies, and dances. This Sunday, the St. Mary's College of Maryland community celebrated its new stadium and the former student-athlete the structure was named after. This dedication ceremony for the Jamie L. Roberts Stadium gathered alumni, athletes, and the broader school community to learn about Jamie Roberts and the impact that she had on the school. A plaque with a picture of her and her background is placed against the wall by the stadium's entrance. The Great Mills High School football team found numerous ways to score throughout their 36-26 victory at Carlson High School and eventually tallied at least one touchdown in all three phases. Great Mills benefited from Carlson's first genuine mistake of the day when Carlson quarterback Devin Lancaster watched a shotgun snap sail over his head and through the end zone for a safety. Then the Hornets' Delandre Barnes returned the ensuing kickoff 48 yards for a touchdown to put the Hornets up 8-0. Carlson drew even in the third quarter on a short run by Josh Thurston and suddenly the Hornets' potential route had evolved into a dogfight. This news brief has been provided by the Enterprise. For more details, visit somdnews.com. That's all we have for you today on this edition of St. Mary's Now. I'm Raymond Graham. And I'm James King. Signing, Signing off. off.